All right, all right, all right. It is Saturday. You know what that means. It's the Red Clay Sports Atlanta Falcons Nation morning show. If you don't know, now you know. Everybody, except for them sorry behind Cowboys fans, and those sorry behind Cowboys, is zero and zero. Now the games count. You'll see the starters. You'll see the blitzes. You'll see the schemes. What you will be about to unleash on those Philadelphia Eagles tomorrow afternoon will be the purge. You heard it here first. It will be the purge for three and a half hours from 1 o'clock to 4.30. It will be legalized murder happening on that field. And that's exactly what I expect to see. And I would say nothing less. Absolutely nothing less. To my immediate left, we have Twisted Torch, Jumpman T. Subscribe to his channel, Twisted Torch TV. Below me, we have the middle of our defense, the headhunter, Rich from Brooklyn. And it, be, and it wouldn't be Atlanta Falcons Nation without the head of the snake. The Vince McMahon of the entire <laughs> of the of the entire nation right here. He's Vince oh my McMahon. god. You ain't Hollywood yeah. no more, man. You the CEO of this, the great one, Mad Mike. Talk to him, bro. Hey man. Um, this is y'all show. I'm just here, and I guess I'll take a seat to y'all and worship y'all feet, clean y'all feet a little bit, man. You know how, you know how that is, man. You gotta, you got, get, you, got you got to show your people some love every once in a while, man. This is y'all show. Y'all kill this shit. Um, we wouldn't be nothing without you guys. All right, so uh, that's Maggie and myself. We're definitely grateful for every crew member and affiliate that we ever had the privilege of working with. Bro, I'm telling oh, you yeah. right now. He, you can tell he's he holding out for tomorrow. He holding out for tomorrow, uh, man. Y'all finna good, get the great one I'm tomorrow. My, I'm, I'm, I'm in my zen moment, all right? I'm 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 feeling good. I, I'll tell you that. Oh, you got the, you got that Himalayan rock solo <laughs> right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I I'll say this. I might be the happy Brock. I might be the dancing Brock right by now. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, we'll we'll leave we'll and leave. And Brock, and I mean, when I say Brock, I mean Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. so you might be getting the you might be getting the happy dancing Brock today, but at any given time, I take your ass to Suplex City. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, he will be back, ladies and gentlemen. He will be back. If you say something in there <laughs> in that chat, he will be back. Okay, he will be back for the say it with your chest segment. I guarantee it. <laughs> now. Before we get into um, Twisted Take, we got to do a roll call because without you guys, there ain't no us. I mean, there would be no reason to get up this early in the freaking morning. All right? So what we got? We got Bobby Boy Zone 3. Oh, you might have to change that, man. We don't do cover threes anymore, man. Good morning, bro. I just <laughs> prime. <laughs> Jamal Grant, Daniel M. YM <laughs> Jamal, what's good, brother? Wallace Smith. Uh, Evan Thompson, Leo Floyd, Donnelly, defense has to hold. You got that right. Atlanta Nation, week one tomorrow, baby. Kevin Art, Mr. Lee, mm -hmm. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. There's, uh, there's 31 of y'all watching right now. So uh, before we start, if you ain't down with us, you ain't down with the AFN family, I got three words for you. Like, share, subscribe. All right? Now, first on the back, Twisted Take. Our resident reporter, Twisted, the man T, he's got the inside scoop on what's going on. He's going to get you, he's going to give you a little appetizer, put on your palate, what's going on tomorrow. Talk to him, Twisted. First, I want to thank the fans. Appreciate y'all for always tuning in to us on Saturday and Sunday morning. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to be on last week with the guys, with the bros. I saw y'all do y'all thing, light it up. The numbers was going crazy. Appreciate everybody in the chat for showing sure. love through that time. Hey, let's get into it. We are one day out from um, week one for the Atlanta Falcons. I appreciate all y'all for staying in, locked into the AFN network. Shouts out to Mad Mike. At Eagles fan habit the other day. I was at work dying. I, was, I enjoyed him. I appreciate you for getting him right. He need to be took to the uh, a patient because he's wild. I don't think he understood his mind was going a little bit. But uh, let's get let's get into the facts. We are actually healthy.
healthy going into week one. Um, Copeland had a little hamstring injury, but he came back Thursday and Friday. Grady Jarrett was out of practice due to a, another concern and wasn't actually injury related. He came back on Friday as well. So we are amped and ready to play. Kendall Sheffield, as you know, is on the IR. Um, Andrews is on the IR as well. In steps Jalen Mayfield. I've said this since we drafted Jalen Mayfield. He might move the guard and look what they made us do. They made Jalen get some PC early. I don't want you cha cha like you did in week three preseason game. I told you. <laughs> so he got a good practice by watching them bull rush him. In step Fletcher Cox this week, and I think he might be more prepared for that bull rush. I guarantee you guys, if you watch the Eagles scheme, they're going to try to take advantage of Mayfield or Hennessy with Fletcher Cox. I expect them to, to double team and try to get to the linebacker when we go with this run early. We haven't seen Mike Davis like that. Um, he already said he's anxious to play. He had an interview the other day stating that, you know, preseason doesn't really change anything. Arthur Smith can have us run the, hell, run the hell out of us doing practice, and we'll be in game shape more than us doing the preseason and have to wait for two weeks. So, Mike. It's your time to shine. You and Cordell Passion, we'll get into that rotation later on, but we want to see both y'all. Magnus, he got a little wrinkle that we was discussing before we turned on the camera, so we will discuss that about Patterson. I'm going to leave that out. Calvin really had an interview <laughs> also. He stated that he's ready to be a number one. He was cool. He was chilling. He said ever mm -hmm. since he had that foot um, healing, he's been good to go. And you see it how he was torching on Xavier Howard from the, the Dolphins in that joint practice. He was giving him everything he wanted for Christmas. And he would do the same <laughs> if you try to put Darius Slay on him one-on-one. -on -one. If y'all boys think, you Eagles fan, I don't know if y'all ain't here or not, if y'all really think y'all finna be able to blitz eight people and leave that man on island by himself, you got another thing coming. So I want y'all to know that. I also heard through the grapevine they safety will not be playing. McLeod. I know y'all know him. He, he used to make some plays versus us. In 2018, we played him in the playoffs. In, uh, well, 2017, we played in the playoffs. In 2018, when we played him, look forward to us taking advantage of that matchup. I saw Mad Mike told the guy, what linebackers do you have to guard these tight ends? And he ain't have an answer. Cause yeah, we don't he, he didn't have an answer. He, he didn't even know. Mm -hmm. he don't know. They don't have anybody. They have a front four. And they have an extra person that comes off the bench that, that rushes for them. Their secondary and their linebackers are weak. There's nothing you can tell me. Darius Slay has made plays, but he also gives up plays a lot, too, if you watch. Last year was his worst season ever since he switched from the Lions to the Eagles. Did yeah, the he's, a poor man, Brent, he's a poor man, Brent. He's a poor man version of Brent Grimes. That's what he is. <laughs> and he don't tackle like Brent either. He don't tackle or jump like Brent. <laughs> so good luck to you. Good luck to you. Um, let's let's get into it, man. I appreciate y'all locking in. Oh, defense. I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. Um, there were some people on my channel talking about how we can't guard Zach Ertz and we can't guard the other big tight end. Hello. Mm, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, player. In 2018, Deion Jones a broken foot and still came in and made an interception on that big tight end. KZ knocked his, his, his whole mouthpiece out. He was scared to even get hit. <laughs> you talking to the white guards. We got good memory over here. I watched the game last night. I was laughing like, oh, okay. You think these linebackers ain't going nobody? Okay. Foyer going to teach him a lesson too. Foyer don't play that. Expect to see Foyer in that middle. Expect the Dion in that outside. Uh, We're going to talk about Dean P's interview. Man, I love that guy, bro. He makes you think you don't even know enough football. I swear to God. Dean mm -hmm. P's is a legend. And if you ever watch his interviews, I promise you, you will enjoy it. But we'll get into that in the next section. I'm going I'm to leave some of that. I just want to speak a little bit to the fans. All right. See, Rich, I'm about to get to you because I got a new segment here. Because before, if you followed uh, the Red Clay Sports Morning Show, if you're not following it, what's your problem? That's why I said like, mm. share, like, like share, and subscribe. Because if you're not following, then <clears throat> who are you listening to in the morning? If you're a Falcons fan, who are you listening to? Please don't listen to those guys on the radio. They they don't own their own masters. Don't listen to those guys on ESPN because they don't talk about us enough. Right mm. here, we have fans that came together and created a page, created a community 
created a spot that you can feel wanted, belong to, and it's not a cult, okay? Because I know I sound like a cult. But what you can feel, <laughs> you can feel, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, yo, there's other Falcon fans out there. That's why it's not, you know, it's not uh, Atlanta Falcon State, Georgia State. It's not Atlanta Falcon East Side, Atlanta Falcon Nation. We got fans as far as California. We have fans as high up as New York, where me and, and, and Rich is coming from. You know, we have fans in Chicago. You thought everybody in Chicago liked the Bears, but that's not the case. We have Falcon yes. fans all over Jews the Jews born and bred in Chicago, okay? Born and bred, man. Mm. Like, we, have, we have fans everywhere. So if you're actually new to the channel, if you're new to this whole thing that we're, that we're doing, sit back, grab back popcorn, and be entertained for the next hour and a half to two hours, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, for the next segment, if you don't know what that means right there, then you don't know you don't know number two number two on the jersey number one in your heart that guy right there that says get fucking set yes get fucking set it is game day tomorrow ladies and gentlemen it is game day i know y'all have waited a long time i know it's the anticipation with building since the, since the draft and since the last time that we saw you know dq get fired and thomas dimitrov got his walking papers and everything i know it's been a long time but now but now the games count. And the first day out, we got a little exhibition. I ain't even calling the game. We got an exhibition against Jalen Hurts. Who? Jalen Hurts and those bum ass like secondary and those bum linebackers that they got. But there's nobody that knows linebackers than our resident headhunter. The middle of the the middle of the defense right here. Rich is gonna give you his personal take. And he's gonna get you fucking set for tomorrow. Talk to them, Rich. I like that. I like that. <laughs> First off, I want to say good morning, everybody. You know, thanks for tuning in. Um, let's get to it, man. This is going to be a great show. So for the most part, you know, from looking at uh, Jalen Hurts, you know, he's very mobile with his legs. And we know he want to extend plays. We know he wants to get out the pocket at times. So definitely – we should blitz the certain way to pretty much angle blitzes where the direction where he wants to scramble, if it's up in the middle or if it's in the right, you can set a guy there or have a guy waiting for him for once he tries to take off, it's a sack. Typically people would want to call it like a QB spy and stuff. Mm -hmm. I know MPs spoke on that aspect of having one guy just QB spy on him, but technically he pretty much was just saying like, yes, that would be a good point to do, but it would have to be more than just one guy just mm -hmm. to confuse people and just to make it harder on the offensive lineman as far as protection wise. But besides that, um, Jalen Hurts can throw the ball. I'm not even going to lie on that. He could sling it. He got a strong arm. And the, the best way to minimize him is when he wants to run the ball because they're going to tell you he want to run the ball. We're going to make him pay. We're going to make him pay. So we're talking about Debo as linebackers, Foyer, Michael Walker, Okandeji, anybody. Because as a linebacker on defense, when you have an opportunity, when you have an opportunity to hit the quarterback, that's what we're looking for as defenders. Because you got some nerve to run the quarterback. Like, all it takes is one or two hits to make him not run the ball no more. That's all it takes. Facts. Lay the wood on him. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to do. So the more you hit him and hit him and hit him and hit him, he ain't going to He going to fold. He going to fold. And after a while, he ain't going to want to run the ball no more. So the blitz is going to work. We, as long as we confuse the offensive linemen and everybody do their assignments, we're going to execute these blitzes. And we know these blitzes going to come from different angles. So the main thing is we're going to have them to get the ball out quick and to minimize the tight ends. I know uh, you spoke about the tight ends. If we take Zach Ertz and Goddard away, those are the two guys in the middle of who he's really looking for. Those are two big targets. So we mm -hmm. take those guys away and we make him throw to them little, them little mini minions he got. And on the outside, <laughs> in 11 personnel, I, I think we'll be able to hold up with him. So that's what I got. We got we got to tackle the hot. That one eighty ain't working over here, baby. We coming to hit. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a question? 
and Can Debo I ask a question to the Philly fans real quick? I, I have a question. Um, this one right there. This is just me. You know, I'm I'm real schematic about things. If you want to say I'm an expert when it comes down to scheme, yeah, I'm I'm probably that. All right, and I have a question for all you Philly fans because all I see is the Rain Man syndrome. All I hear, <laughs> all I see, all I hear from you guys is y'all not beating Philly. I'm sorry. Explain to me schematically how are you guys wow. going to beat the Falcons? Because saying, oh, I'm, that's just an opinion. And this is the, the Philly Philly fan. He couldn't explain it either. All he kept saying, we have Fletcher Cox. We have this guy. Well, schematically, that doesn't make any sense. There you we go. talk about schematically. Fletcher Cox is a very good player. He's a very, mm-hmm. very good pass player. He, he's a pass rusher, but when it comes to stopping the run, he's not very good. We've we've proven that. The Falcons have always been able to run against Philly. Our issues playing against Philly is getting in the end zone. So, again, schematically, how are you going to attack the Atlanta Falcons team? No one has yet to tell me this, all right? So, if you guys are smart enough, all right, and Falcons fans are dumb for having our opinions, and saying that we're not going to be able to, to beat you guys, please explain to me. Because I'm willing to learn, all right? I got a big-ass head. But my brain may be a little a little small every once in a while. So I, I need to be informed. I need to be taught. I, I want to learn, okay? So you guys tell me, how are you going to beat the Falcons schematically? They don't have they a reason. Yeah, they can't tell you, Mike. They can't. They can't tell you. It's a new offense. Everything is new. Like it's a obviously it's an unknown on how the they're gonna approach the game uh, offensively, and yeah. So we are gonna take advantage of it. I, I feel like the offense on the Falcons we have more an advantage. Like our offense is way more of a power offense than than they are. So Bro, they think that Jim Johnson still runs the defense. <laughs> they think that Hugh Douglas is still on that a defensive line. They still think that Brian Dawkins is going to walk through that door. Like they, Jeremy I mean, Trotter, bro. <laughs> Jeremy Trotter. Like I'm telling you right now, they still think Deuce Staley is running the ball. Miles Sanders is running the ball, and he might even he might not even finish the season. So you better be looking at Kenneth Gainwell, the guy that I've been wanting to come to the Falcons. Kenneth Gainwell is your running back. So don't even talk about Miles Sanders going to run all over us or whatever. Get out of here with that mess, man. Just stop. Just stop. I wasn't, I wasn't even going to try to get mad today. All right? That's mad my job. I wasn't going to be that guy. All right? <laughs> but now, one, one thing I, I do not like, I appreciate people for being a fan of what they do, but the people that gave me the most headaches are people from Philadelphia. I have no idea why. I don't know why, but it's people from Philadelphia they always giving me. They, see? Jamal Grant with a $2 super chat. Thank you for the $2 super chat. You basically bought Tomorrow, us a, a, good, a, a yeah. bag of trolleys, man. That's a bag of trolleys right there. Got me some candy. They think yes, they still got Duke Riley, don't they? Listen, Jamal. Nah, he ain't there no more. No, Duke. No, they don't no. even have a Duke Riley. Don't don't yeah. be cursing nope, him. I told not. you. I told you. Don't be cursing. I don't want to hear Dallas Goddard. I don't want to hear Duke <laughs> Riley. I don't want to hear none of that mess, man. It's just look. You have one man. One man that I have to worry about on that particular defense that they're going to be calling out. It's one man that they probably going to double team. I don't want to hear about anybody else. Darius Slay, whatever. He's going to have to make a decision on who he wants to cover. Gage is all right. And you see what we see what Sly did to Xavier Howard, who's supposed to be one of the, quote, unquote, one of the best corners in the league. And you see how Sly is not worried about nothing this year. He has, like, a, a very eerie confidence that Julio has. Maybe it's something about those uh, those those Bama receivers that they have like that kind of quiet confidence about themselves. But a lot of these guys here is quiet. They ain't saying nothing because I think they truly believe that they have to set the world on fire this year. That's why the coach ain't saying nothing. That's why the coach is not giving anything. And if you actually looked at the interviews, look at the interviews on AtlantaFalcons.com. That's your that's your one and only plug, Atlanta Falcons. Okay. Look at AtlantaFalcons.com <laughs> <laughs> and listen to the interviews and listen to Dave Ragone and Arthur Smith. The media over there, like Dave Ledbetter, they're prying. They're trying to get something out of them. They're trying to get something out of them, and they're not saying a damn thing. Dean Pease basically held court yesterday. 
15 minutes on defense and then give you nothing. Mm. Okay. If you think, if you think for a second that Jalen Hurts is really going to tear us up, I mean, I'm going to put it like this. And we're going to talk about this. And I'm going to give you a little bit. Dean Pease basically said that he was in a practice one day and he changed the number of a linebacker and it confused the offensive line. And from that point forward, he was like, well, I'm just going to start doing that now. So he said 54 could be the mic. Three could be the mic. Uh, uh, 45 could be the mic. He's like, every different week or every different time that I adjust, the mic is going to change. So when for those that's not, you know, like hip to football lingo, when you change the mic, you change the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The protection. Protection. protection yeah, you yeah. Change, the, change the protection. So you don't know where to slide. You don't know where to slide. You don't know where the, where the heat is coming from because you can't identify the middle of the defense. You don't know where it's at. Hey, so, need an extra set of eyes. It has to be the all. It has to be the center and the quarterback to understand that. Yep. Well, and Jalen Hurts is a he's a young quarterback. He only hasn't three seen games. A lot of NFL. Well, yep. I guess I guess it's too bad that they don't have seven timeouts that like they do in basketball because he's gonna be pulling a lot of timeouts <laughs> running to the sideline. Come on, man. <laughs> and see, that's why I'm hoping that it's a lot of fans at the stadium. Since y'all since y'all think he the real deal, make it hard for him. Make sure y'all cheer it on second and third down to where he can. He got to do this. He can't hear. The offensive line can't hear. The receivers can't hear what he's calling. I guarantee you, when Grady line up like this in that three-point stance and he's looking at you, he coming for you. Don't think it's going to be sweet like that. He going to start the game good, and you're going to have to double-team him. Straight Bro. up. And Jaylen, Yo, twist it. And he's bringing help, too fast. Our linebacker too fast for that. If Jalen tries to step up and just move out the way, they coming for you. Dean ain't finna just let you sit down there. For, you gonna get some plays. Yeah, you gonna get some plays. It's about adjustments, though. That's the difference. Dan Quinn wasn't adjusting. Dean P gonna be up there. Oh, let me change this up for him since he think that he got this play every time. Mm-hmm. You're not, we're not gonna keep giving you the mm-hmm. same thing. You don't know what we running. Because like he said in the interview, everything has been vanilla. I haven't even shown you what I'm really gonna put out like that. So Ooh. good luck to you. See, you see what Bobby Boy said? See, new head coach, let's go. Don't play with us. This is a new Atlanta. You feel me? Yeah. We, this, tomorrow starts a new era of Atlanta football. Like, we all got to understand that. And don't worry, because the media going to see that shit, too. Y'all still want to rank us? <laughs> oh, oh, 26 and all that. Y'all, y'all still think we the same team from last year, and we totally not. It's going to be completely new. So this is a whole new era of culture. Right, and identity, which is two things that we didn't have last year for the past few years with Quinn. So mm-hmm. let's get ready for tomorrow. So tomorrow, y'all gonna really see what what this new Falcons team gonna look like. Hey, but Rich, Rich, it's Yo. it's kind of crazy though, right? So Dan Quinn goes to the Cowboys. They make turnovers. They look good. What have we been complaining about? What Dan Quinn didn't do? Adjusting. And then Same what did he do at the end of the game? What did he do at the end of the game? Not adjust. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You ain't going to get that from Dean. You're not going to get that. Good luck if you think that. <laughs> you know, there, there's one way, well, two ways Philadelphia is going to be able to get uh, a win on the Falcons. And I stress this multiple times. One, they have to get off to a fast start. They don't get off to a fast start. It's going to be a long day for Jalen Hurts. Two is that I'm sorry. I'm getting so many calls right now. What the hell is going on? Um, it's some Eagles fans, bro. It's some Eagles fans. Hey, man. <laughs> they, they, looking for my, <laughs> they looking for my head right now. Um, the second way is <laughs> Um, Fletcher Cox is just going to have to wreak havoc in the Falcons. Um, if the Falcons don't keep that balance, which I don't expect because Arthur Smith is just a complete different type of offensive play caller. Like he believes he's like Kyle Shanahan. Even if the game isn't, um, in his favor, he's not going to abandon his run. Like that's something that he's been taught from that Kyle Shanahan being a part of that tree on that coaching tree. You know, learning on a Matt LaFleur, um, Mike Malarkey, like those guys believe in balance 
regardless of the score. So you're not going to get 50, 60 passes <coughs> out of Arthur Smith. Um, we can. Um, we can, but that's the way that I see Philadelphia winning games. They have to get off to a fast start, which basically means, or more than likely mean, that Atlanta Falcons are uh, making a lot of you know mistakes early in the game, um, getting turnovers. Uh, we turn the ball over um, in their territory, and um, and Fletcher Cox is going to absolutely baptize Jalen Mayfield. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's the only way that I see Philadelphia being able to stop. Because one thing we know about Dean Pease is where he just stressed. Um, he makes adjustments. Dean Pease is known for not having the same exact game plan from game to game. All right. Mm -hmm. He will switch an entire game plan up completely opposite of what you are not like. You, you, you think he's going to come out blitzing. Well, guess what? He going to come out and spy you. You know what I'm saying? All he going to do is he, he'll, he'll, he'll drop three linemen. I've seen him. He'll drop three linemen in coverage and send corner black, cornerback blitzes safety blitzes you won't expect it this is what he this is what he's known for doing so it's like i'm not worried about dean Pease. however offensively is it is going to take arthur smith a little bit of time to kind of get the rhythm with matt ryan but once he get that rhythm with matt ryan y'all ass is grass okay i'm telling you right now there's another there's another way that the eagles can beat the falcons a couple of points. Number one, we get lost on the bus getting to the getting to the stadium. Okay. Matt Ryan oversleeps, okay, and gets locked in his hotel room. All right. Grady Jarrett, Debo, AJ, Eric Harris, and Deron Harmon all get stomach viruses. Okay. <laughs> like, 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 now I'm, I'm just, yo, I'm just, I'm just playing with y'all, Eagles fans. Y'all throwing the shade, and I actually, see, and I actually see, I see somebody out there. I think his name is. I think his name is Tyler Ingram. If you stay there, if you stay there, if, if, if you stay if in the stay chat, in the chat, we got a second got a for you second. coming up, bro. It's called "Say It With Your Chest." I want you to come on. I want you to actually argue, argue. And let us know, like, how, you know, do you see schematically how you going to beat the uh, Eagles? I mean, how you going to beat the Eagles? Dude, that's my homie, bro. He's just mocking. He's just mocking. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, yo, they do. Um, um, we got 499 in the Super Chat. Todd Mullins. Todd Mullins was good, man. The Eagles have 50 million dead cap money, the worst in the NFL. They are paying Carson Wentz 34 million to limp around trying to play. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's management. Man. Yeah. I mean, and that's the reason why they believe in Jalen Hurts because they ain't got enough. Y'all can't even go draft another quarterback. He ain't got no choice but to keep him. Yeah, you can't do nothing. You can't do nothing. <laughs> oh, no, people don't realize. This is what we were talking about with Matt Ryan. This is exactly what Philadelphia is going exactly. They would have been. This is when you look at the Philadelphia Eagles, the Falcons. Um, this is exactly what the Falcons would have looked like. They would have had a young, inexperienced quarterback, and they can't even afford. Right? Like, what they don't realize, you cannot afford to bring mm -hmm. in another quarterback. You have mm -hmm. to. You have to run with Jalen Hurts because. If you don't, you're going to be forced to get rid of guys like, you know, uh, Gardner, um, BG there. You got to get rid of BG and you got to get rid of Fletcher Cox in order to even, you know, have the cap room to bring in another quarterback. Mm hmm. Well, there it is. You heard it. You heard it there first. You know, now. we didn't want that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't want to kill BG, bro. We've been saying we've been saying this for months, bro. Months, bro. I think I think we got, some feedback we got some feedback issues. We got some feedback issues or something going on right now. I don't know, like who has a uh, like a mic yep. going on. And, and, and let, 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 let's make this clear. Like this is a fair channel, right? This is a fair. We 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 don't necessarily sit here and pick mm -hmm. at teams. We give our honest opinion, and I said this before. All right, if you can come and give us. You know the absolute facts, stats, truth, 
um, we're gonna like we're gonna give you opportunity to speak. We don't come in and clown you and do all that necessary unnecessary stuff. This is about football, and like I said before, the Eagles have a lot of issues. All right, you can't tell me with a straight face if you can't na- name me any of your linebackers, okay? And y- all you keep saying is Miles Sanders is gonna run all over the Falcons. All right, that's all fine and dandy, but. You're still gonna have to stop the Atlanta Falcons, and we're talking about true? Mike Mike Davis. Nobody is giving this man absolutely no no credit at all. All right, they ain't giving him nothing. All right, they disrespecting Mike like he just didn't lead the whole league. It wasn't Derrick Henry. It's Mike Davis. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's 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 be let's keep that 100. We're talking about physical specimen. That's what he is. All right, and no disrespect to Derrick Henry. But he wasn't the guy that was leading the yards out the contact, broken tackles, that thing. That was Mike Davis. So let's keep that real, bro. Hey, you can't get him. We said twisted. And he can catch better than Derrick Henry. And don't forget, he doesn't skip leg day either. That's what makes Mike Davis special. He don't skip leg day. Okay? Nah, he don't. Anybody- Anybody, anybody out there that's trying to be an NFL player that's uh, either in Pop Warner or play flag football or like that, never skip leg day, man. Don't. <laughs> this, this, dude, this dude already runs hard, already as, mm-hmm. it, as it is, just his running style and his ability, right? He can make you miss, you miss, miss for work. work. Can, you see what he did to Foyer? Foyer he almost he ran. Some... He almost made Foyer hit a goddamn flip on the field. Y'all didn't see that clip? <laughs> No, 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 no! Mm-hmm. I seen that. I seen that. That was right after Deion Jones. He missed the tackle. I know exactly. I know exactly what play you talking about. Mike Davis is making them look crazy. But besides that, now Mike Davis is home. Mm-hmm. He's another guy on the team, which is who's a Falcon fan, mm-hmm. right? So his whole life growing up. So then he's gonna run even harder. You don't think Mike Davis is gonna run even harder? He's gonna put on for his city. What he said, he said in an interview, Rich. He said he's yeah, anxious to, to to put on for Atlanta. Mm-hmm. But see, my, my, my issue is for Atlanta. But my issue with this is that why people sleeping on Mike Davis if that guy wasn't killing us for the past couple of years anyway. It was CMC, but it was also Mike Davis too. Okay, so let's let's not let's not get anything twisted. Like it was just like uh you know uh, it was run CMC back that I was just like tearing us up. It was Mike Davis that was running over like our linebackers because you know. There was a couple that was kind of like light in the ass a little bit, you know. But now he's on our team and he's going to be running hard and he's going to be, he has something to prove too. That's the thing. A lot of guys that's on this team right now, they're hungry and they have a lot to prove. See, this team is not the get right team anymore. All right. You ain't coming down here talking about you going to get right and you just, it's like this, like some glorified scrimmage. I said this before and I'm going to keep saying this probably until the end of the show. It is basically going to be a glorified purge starting tomorrow. Between the hours, again, say it with me, 1 and 4.30, it is going to be legalized murder that's going to be happening on that field. I don't want to take anything lightly. So if anybody want to put into the chat, and I'm going to look at it right here, okay, put it into the chat, hashtag purge or hashtag sack Atlanta, okay? Mm. Somebody's going to pay for this. Somebody's going to have to pay for this, okay? Somebody's going to have to pay for all our pain and all our suffering that we've been going through during the Thomas Dimitrov and – um. And Dan Quinn era. Somebody's gonna some somebody's gonna have to catch this work. Somebody's gonna get, somebody's this, work. Gonna get this work. And the Eagles, well, the Eagles, you well, you just have to be you're 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 number you're, one you're, on the list. I'm sorry. That's just gonna have to be you. Deal with it. Deal with now it. Now moving on. Now moving on. Gene P's interview. interview. You got that echo. Is there anybody that got anybody? um they check that mic? Check that mic. We got we got an echo going on. Is it's switching in switching between us? I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, but um, but um, yeah, yeah. DP's interview. DP's interview. Oh, I think I do. I think I do. I think I do. Okay. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Um, good. <laughs> the it, sabotage it, 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 is real. It might be great. <laughs> yeah, sabotage is real. But hey, we we heard DP's DP's volume, bro. Like. If you don't know schemes, if you don't know like defensive perspectives, and you like watching us, we're giving you a hint to go ahead and watch Dean Pease. He's gonna break it down what they're doing without actually giving you what he's gonna do. 
<laughs> he uh, stated mm-hmm. in his interview that he doesn't believe in corners traveling. And he's played with some of the best corners, but he don't believe in them traveling. He prefers them. If you're going to do that, you're going to like the, the Saints used to do us. Put your second best corner and double the best receiver and put your best corner on the second receiver. He believes in that method. So, hey, mm-hmm. I will tell you, if you know how to get A.J. Terrell to, to lock down a whole side, or if you know how to get A.J. Terrell to trail, I don't care which one you do. As long as we're able to get pressure on the QB and cause us to get turnovers. That's the only thing I care about. And with mm-hmm. us playing the Eagles, don't let us get this defense started early. Because everybody knows when you get confident, you heard what Dion used to say, you look good, you play good. <laughs> so, <laughs> once you feel it yourself, good luck to you. That means we finna go on a streak. And the Bucks, I saw how y'all look last Thursday. But we're going to talk about that next week. Mm. Eagles. These Eagles, man, y'all receivers, I, y'all do got two good tight ends. Y'all do have a, a, a Hall of not a Hall of Fame, but a Heisman Award winner. We're going to see what they do versus this defense. Y'all haven't played this speed yet as far as in the preseason. We haven't even seen the speed yet. We just saw practices. It ain't going to be easy for you to just – you think you're going to be able just to scheme to get Deion Jones lined up by himself and you think you're going to take advantage of it? No. I want you to. If you think if you think you can line up Ertz – um, Dallas out there in the slot, and then Dion's going to trail him. If you really think that's good for you, good luck to you. I don't think that's smart, and I'll honestly, I do not think that's smart with how Dion knows how to read the field and play people in coverage, especially tight ends, especially tight ends. So well, uh, what he was saying was, I'm not going to put Dion just out there by himself because they might have to end up running the ball on us. I want Dion to be where he's at to make plays. So that what that telling me is he is psyching me out. He's making me think one thing, and it might be another. I'm worried. I, I'm worried for the Eagles, and all honestly, because I don't know what he's going to do. I won't Purge. know until the first, the first session. <laughs> Purge. <laughs> for, for, for me, like, I, I'm, I'm excited I make I'm I'm just really excited to see how Dean Pease is gonna confuse Jalen Hurts and how he's gonna make it hard for him. But for our defense, um, looking at it, we have about f- probably four to five returning starters. So we got a lot of new guys, a lot of new faces on this defense. So I want to see how these guys get to play. That was one thing that Dean Pease mentioned in his interview. He's gonna get to see who what how these starters can play like to see what we could really do. Like we're going to really find out what can we do and what we can't do. Like, you know, find out our strengths. Um, Obviously Eric Harris, uh, Fabian Moreau and Deron Harmon. There's going to be two, no, three guys that's going to make a big, that play a big factor for us during this passing game. So Mm -hmm. depending, depending how we play that. So I'm excited to see that. So that's going to play a very important factor. You know, and don't forget, you know, um, we talked about the starters, bro. We got a second round pick, a rover that could come off the bench. That mm-hmm. could just start roving. We got Richie Grant. See, the, the thing is, like, don't forget that we have Richie Grant. And I think before the end of the year, you want to see a lot of Jayhawk, too. OK, mm-hmm. we got some ball hawks. We got some ball hawks out here that, that's going to be that's ready to play. And they have probably they have packages for them. So we may be rotating. The only the thing is, is that we're one of the biggest question marks out there right now. People think they got us figured out because they think it's the same old thing with the same old scheme, with the same old coach and the same old Falcon. It's not. There's a reason why there's 82 people watching here. There's a reason why there's 82 people who have like their hearts thumping out of their chest because they're hype. We ain't been this hype in a long time, probably since Dan Quinn came in. You know, when we, yeah. when we thought, when we thought, when we thought, that we was like, all you got to do is just fix the defense. So we got somebody that had the lead in the ball, and all you got to do is come in and fix the defense. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead, hold go ahead. On. Tyler, Tyler, we are not comparing Mike Davis to Derrick Henry, dude. Stop stop creating weird narratives, bro. You're creeping me out. I'm going to clown you in a minute, Tyler. Stop doing that, bro. You're a racist. Wait, wait, wait. Deal with, deal with Peters having an ACL tear and deal with Devontae Freeman running the ball and, and catching an MCL tear. 
Stop doing that, bro. That's weird, bro. Stop doing that, bro. That's weird. You creep me out in the comments. Back to what you were saying, though, man. I had to let you know because he's been extra. Yeah. You know we ain't comparing Derrick Henry and Mike Davis. We you saying he's aggressive and he can catch the ball out the backfield, bro. He works in the scheme how Derrick Henry could. Of course, Derrick Henry is a bell cow. He's six three. He's two hundred some pounds. Come on, is more shifty than Derrick Henry. Tyler in here trolling, and I'm, you know what, Tyler? From right now, from the forty minute twenty nine second mark to the end of the show, I know you're trolling, okay? Because your boy just spoke up for you. But you know what? I told you we got a section for you. But now I got a name for you. Your name is Candyman. Come, I think on. we spent. I think we mentioned your name like five times already. I think your name is Candyman from this point forward. Okay, everybody <laughs> can hashtag Candyman. Because Tyler Ingram is here trolling. He's trolling right now, and we've said his name too many times. We've said his name too many times. Jamal Grant with the five dollar super chat. Thank you for the gas money, bro. He says, "Don't forget, I said it first. Grant going to be our defense MVP. There it is." Mm -hmm. He said it. Is it you think he's saying that because his last name is Grant and Richie Grant? Like, I know that's he, your cousin. Jamal. He might have an inside scoop. <clears throat> he might have an inside scoop. Hey, I like Richie Grant, bro. He he's elusive. He knows how to get to the ball. He can play up um in the slot. He can play up front or in the back end. Like I like Richie Grant. I just need him to get better. You know what I'm saying? And he's gonna learn behind Herman and Eric Harris. Let him learn, and he'll get sprinkled in on a couple plays like. This is what I like about Dean Pease. He's not just leaving the same 11 people out there the whole game. People need breaks. People got to learn, give them chances to shine. And I think Richie Grant will have that chance. Michael Walker will have that chance. A.O. will have that chance. Even Jacob's going to have that chance. Like We're, we're looking to, to build multiple people while still win games. We got to see what everybody can do. That was the purpose of the preseason. Right. Bro. Before you finish us off, Rich, I wanna I wanna let you know that Grady Jarrett, just like you said, when Grady get into that three point stance, my man said it. He said he hunting. The only thing oh, is, yeah, like nobody nobody likes to hunt alone, right? That's usually a group effort. See, he ain't coming alone. See, he got a big boy next to him. He got Marlon Davidson. That I don't see nobody in the chat talking this guy up. They was before, but they ain't talking him up anymore. Marlon Davidson, my man is bringing help with him. And just like just like uh my man Jumpman said, he's coming with help, he's coming with AO, he's coming with Michael Walker, he's coming with Debo, he's coming with Foyer. My man is coming with help. It's not just one guy that you're gonna have to just account for and you could just double team him and then have five to seven seconds to throw the football. Mm -mm. What's about to happen again? Hashtag perch. I'm gonna be saying that a lot. Get used to it. Hey, now move it. <laughs> <ain't bigger> <laughs> I you see that? You see that? We didn't even bring that man like playing for some game. money. He got to play. He want, he took a pay cut to come back. You don't think he gonna try to play to get some money for next year? He knows we can let him go if he don't do good. I'm telling you. Now, now before before Rich finishes off, I want people to to, uh, to look at Rich's drip, man. Put that hashtag drip in the in the, in the comment, <laughs> man. Look at that hoodie, man. It's fire, bro. Tell it ain't fire, man. Ooh. If you think that's fire, like put put put, yo, put flames in the comment section as he bless us with uh finishing off with this with this uh with this subject, man. Let him know, Rich. Yeah, for the most part, you know, I, I said what I had to say with Dean Pease, you know, what we gonna bring, but um yeah, man, but I'm I'm good to go with the next topic, bro. What we what we at? <laughs> Running backs? Nah, what nah, we have. Good. Keep it going. We have what will be the rotation and snap count for the backs now. Um, see, me and Jumpman was kind of like talking about this a little bit. See, I ain't, but see what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna take up too much of your time. You know, I'm I'm just the bishop. I'm not the deacon. I'm just the bishop of this church right here. So what I'm about to tell you a little bit is if anybody remembers, if anybody remembers the Green Bay Packers. Hmm, does anybody remember a specific receiver? His number was 18. His name was Randall Cobb. If you remember Randall Cobb, I'm telling you right now, that's exactly, I, I believe, this is my opinion, but I'm, I'm saying that I believe that we're going to use Corderell Patterson the way they use Randall Cobb. Now, if you don't remember, they put Randall Cobb in the backfield. 
They split them out wide. They moved it around just to see if it was man coverage, but it was zone coverage. And Randall Cobb ate, and that's how he got paid. And that's why, mm-hmm. that's why A Rod asked him basically almost begging, you know, the the GM to bring back, you know, Randall Cobb back to Green Bay because he knows what that what he meant, you know, to a quarterback like that. So when you have a weapon, see. Cordero Patterson is not a uh, running back. He's not a wide receiver. He's not a kick returner. He's a weapon. Mm-hmm. Just like Weapon X. Y'all call him a unicorn. I call him Weapon X. He looks like a Wolverine with the mutton chops, you know, coming down his face and whatnot. But, um, yeah, we have weapons, and we're going to move moving them around so that you can't dictate to us. We're dictating to you. This offense is going to dictate to you what you have, and it's going to show your hand, and then we're going to execute – and it's going to be reservations for six. That's all I got to say with the, with the topic. Twisted, talk to them. All right. So when it comes to the backs, you stated how Cordell would be used. Like, I really think it's key. And they talked about it in the um, press conference, the office coordinator, saying that we could have both of them in the game at the same time. We could have Mike Davis and Cordell Patterson in the game at the same time. So when you do that, you can, you have a chance to run an HB draw. You have a chance to run a uh, – an H back screen, like all players go into formation, and then we already have Kyle Pitts who's going to be doing motioning too. So once Kyle motions to the other side of the field, you you shift your coverage that way. Oh, we running the die right where you left, right where you mm-hmm. left, going right in. Cordell is key to me because Randall Cobb is a small shifty guy. Cordell is a big shifty guy. He can run through arm tackles. You're not gonna just you're not gonna just tackle Cortez or sorry, you're not gonna tackle Cordell by just grabbing him and come no, no, he's not doing that. That's a wrong man. Yeah. He's already <laughs> shown he can run through the tackles without no issues. Imagine if they do wheel routes with Cordell. Imagine if they do angle routes with Cordell. Well, are you gonna bring your safety down to guard him? Cause if you do that, what does that leave? One on one coverage with Calvin Ridley and Russell Gage. That's key to me. And Arthur Smith is going to be able to scheme that way to where you got to show me your hand and Matt just picks his poison, whatever he wants to do. Whatever matchup I want to go to, I'm going to do that. You got to pick. If you're not going to put that linebacker down there and you're going to bring a safety, that's going to change the game plan for how Matt Ryan attacks this defense. Right. Go ahead, Rich. Yeah, so with this running back rotation, like, uh, before before we get to the running backs and them running and do and doing their thing and getting second level, we got to block first. So yeah. we know we want to establish the run. You know that's one thing Arthur Smith is going to want to do is establish the run. And that's what we're going to have to do. That's one thing we're going to do. So we're going to establish the run. So based, once we establish the run, I think it's going to feed off of Mike Davis is going to carry us most of the way. And I think we'll use Cordell for like a change of pace type Definitely. of thing because, you know, he's like a slasher. You know, we've seen in camp Cordell running a lot of wheel routes and doing all those stuff. So I expect to see that some some way, some fashion throughout the game. But um, Mike Davis is a bulldozer, so he's going to make you pay. He's going he's supposed to break you down. You know what I'm saying? He's going to make you miss and he's going to break you down. He's a physical runner. So uh, back to the O-line aspect of it, I know a lot of people was talking about Mayfield and, and, and Cox and stuff. You mentioned it earlier, Twisted, you know, doing those uh, conjoined blocks, you know, making them block together, you know, mm-hmm. them double teams climbing up to, to second level and all that stuff is going to play a big factor. Even though mm-hmm. we run the wide zone scheme, which we've seen a lot in the preseason, it's a little vanilla a little bit because we was uh, evaluating the, uh, the young players. But we're probably still going to use those same type of run plays too. So um, I'm excited how Arthur Smith is going to call different run plays and how we create these running lanes for these running backs. Because I think Mike Davis and Cordell, they could run the ball. I know how they're going to run. You just got to give them the space in the alleys and the creases to hit the hole. That's why I'm referring back and forth with the O-line and running back. So I think once we, once the O-line set that up for the running backs, I think we're going to be fine. Five yards a pop each time. Mm-hmm. First down, first down. And 
like yeah, you said, it, it, it runs in unison. <laughs> it, it's it's a cohesion. The line works with the running backs. We ain't even talk about Wayne. That yeah. guy had almost seven hundred yards with the Giants, and, and the he Giants was running in between the, the tackles. Bro, you know how bad that offensive line was with the Giants. It's so bad they're not even starting Saquon Barkley tomorrow. That's mm. how bad it is. You know that they're not even going to start my man. Uh, he's on my fantasy team, but we ain't even going to talk about that. But yes, yeah, Wayne Gallman is going to eat, bro. Wayne Gallman averaged four point six yards a carry last year with that leaky behind offensive line of the New York Giants. Now they did say that they're going to bring him along slowly. Yeah. You know, so we may see him, we may not. I mean, I mean, don't be surprised if you actually see him more on like special teams, maybe as a gunner or something like that. Like, because we're just gonna bring him along like slowly, and then maybe around like uh, week three, we'll we'll unleash him in some patches and and whatnot. But then again, we don't know that 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 brainchild, the, you know, the dude that knows where the uh, where the bodies is buried, Arthur Smith. Like he knows what he got in plan for the for the guys tomorrow. So. I don't know, but as of right now, see, there he is. He mm. knows. He knows. And that's the most that you want to get out of him. But yeah. At this time, 89 eyes, 89 likes, 89 eyes, 89 subscriptions, 89 eyes, 89 times that you guys can get us hype. You guys get us up in the morning. And you guys are the reason why we do what we do. We're fans. We don't belong to nobody. We don't belong to the the Atlanta Journal Constitution, the New York Daily News, the Wall Street Journal, the Athletic. We don't belong to none of that. We're just regular guys that get up in the morning that come to talk sports like we in a barbershop. That's what yeah. it is. And at this time, it's at the 51 mark, the 51 minute mark. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. Get yourself up, stretch a little bit. You know, we got you know, about a couple more subjects we're about to get at you right now. Um, stretch your neck because I know y'all probably been about this close to the camera. Get yourselves ready because we about to come up to a certain part of the show where I want you to keep that energy and bring it to us. You're going to dictate to us, all right? So, like I said, it's coming. Be patient. Next subject, what are some of the matchups we could take advantage of? Rich, I'm going to start with you because you are the resident middle linebacker, man. <laughs> so, if you talk about matchups that we could take advantage of, oh, and did I mention that my man's about to be a coach too? What's the mm. bro? My man's about to be a coach. So does anybody know? <laughs> now, I'm, speaking we to I'm speaking in Yo. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. here. Um, yeah. for ahead, the bro. most part, with, with with matchups, and this dude right here is gonna be a big sleeper for us and the X factor for us this season. And I'm gonna emphasize it too: is Russell Gage. Mm. Okay. Reason like being, reason being. We know what Calvin really going to do. Probably, you know, we'll double team him or something like that. They might not use their best guys on him. We probably won't even see Slay on, on Ridley like that. We probably see one of their two guys we don't even know. And, you know, we have Pitts. We know what Pitts going to do. The reason why I brought up Gage is because he's going to be that guy where it's like he's going to have a lot of his one-on-one -on -one matchups. I don't mm -hmm. see Russell Gage being a guy – ever being double teamed at all, at all. So he can run routes. Russell Gage got good, solid hands, and he had a good season last year. So he even said it in his interviews himself that the coaches have high expectations for Russell Gage, and he's going to have a lot of opportunities. Primarily if we if we see a defense is in man and that, uh, that main drag route that he be running on Isaiah Oliver all the time in practice, that y'all see him getting cooked on it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but Russell Gage, man, he go he gonna have a big season this year, and I, I I see him winning a lot of his matchups as well. But I'm gonna save the rest for you guys. Y'all y'all know who to talk about, but I just want to bring up uh, Russell Gage. Get it twisted. All right, so we already talked about the running backs matchup. We know that's gonna be key. Um, them versus the linebackers. I love to see that. But if they're going to be honest, mm -hmm. <laughs> what we're looking to see is this two tight end set versus these linebackers. I got to see how they're going to use Pitts. The way, the way I'm hyped up about Pitts, the way Madness, the way Rich is hyped up about Pitts, I got to see how they're going to use him. I got to see how you're going to use Hayden. Like, Hayden, man, it's scary, bro. I feel like it's, it's, it's going to be scary tight end season. 
because the way these tight ends run, bro, they fast, they're physical. You don't really see them get overcomposed like that, so their head is always in the game. And they anxious to play. Kyle Pitts said to himself in an interview, I'm anxious. I'm ready for Sunday. I want to see how they're gonna line how they're gonna line up against me. I'm anxious to go against opposite teams to see what they can do. And with Kyle Pitts, I know I already talked about this before. You're gonna have routes to where they're both running at the same time, but one is gonna be running, taking the coverage away from the other. So if you double team Kyle doing a streak, Hayden Hurst coming right on, on the under route. You're gonna get 10 to 15 yards every time. Just switching up with that. Until they make an adjustment, you're not going to be able to just double team everybody like they did with Julio like a couple years ago. You can't just double team Julio because we have tight ends. Tony G, the tight end guy, the Hall of Fame king, him and Shannon Sharp. Tony G said Kyle Pitts is going to be hard to guard that man. He's 6'6". Just throw it up to him. We yeah. already seen the play he made versus Fabian in the training camp where he literally just skied over. Let me get that. <laughs> Let me get that. And Fabian's six feet, six one. So if you ain't got time, if you ain't got linebackers or safeties that's big enough to guard him, it ain't gonna work. And Kyle Pitts is good at uh catch radius. He catches the ball low, he catches the ball high, he catches the ball right here. He he knows how to catch the ball, and I'm sure him and Matt been practicing that back shoulder throw. That's going to be deadly. Them back shoulder throws to Kyle Pitts, he was doing that in college. So if he's doing that in college working on it, imagine what he's going to do with an all-pro QB who's won the MVP who used to do that route all the time to Tony G and Roddy White. They waiting on it. That's why you see Matt chilling. You don't see Matt angry. You know he lost one of his best receivers, but he got a phenom in Kyle Pitts to work with for three or four years. And he ain't going to do nothing but get better because Kyle Pitts wants to learn. It's key. Oh, I, so, I want to say one thing. Go ahead. You know, go ahead. Smith, well, you know, you know, Art Smith when he first came here, he wasn't smiling. This is before he didn't realize what the personnel. Nah, so he yeah. didn't know what he what he was working with. He came in, he was stoic. He wouldn't say anything. He was nervous. If he noticed that he started opening up a lot, like he's coming, he's coming into the interview smiling now. Mm-hmm. He's joking with the media, dude. This guy, you talk about like Matt Ryan's relaxed. People want to sit there and, and they want to get all up in arms. Like, how come, you know, like we haven't seen our starters play? Well, if you ask the Ravens, I mean, who would you like? If you ask the Ravens right now, if they would play their starters or not, bro, right now, they're, they're down to Devontae Freeman, Latavius Murray. Uh, who else? Maybe who else I'm in there? And Le'Veon Le'Veon Bell. And they dusted off Le'Veon Bell. Dude, we're one of the healthiest teams coming in to game one right now. And that's exactly what you wanted. Because just imagine, like, if we played Kyle Pitts more than we, you know, than we should have, and he actually got hurt. We'd be ready to run Arthur Smith out, out of this town on the route right now, you know? Like, or if uh, if uh, Matt Ryan, which probably are some of these people in this chat, probably want this guy to get hurt. And Felipe, and, you know, and, and Felipe was starting. You'd be ready to run Matt Ryan. I was like, oh, we shouldn't have played him or whatever like that. But, no, we're healthy and we're ready. Straight up. Plain and simple. It's just as simple as that. Like this team just seems like they're ready. There's a calmness about it. There's a also there's like a, a controlled. What, what, what did we say? Like in, in your in your video, controlled chaos. Chaos. <laughs> hashtag again. I'm keep giving these people hashtag stuff to put on the put on a t-shirt, man. Sure, man. Hashtag controlled chaos, man. Hey, we gonna put that on the shirt, bro. Forget it. We gonna put it on the shirt. Don't give him that chance. We gonna put that on the shirt. I mean, even Dean has stated that though that he wants it to be controlled chaos. And when mm-hmm. Floyd had his interview, he said he was anxious to see, like Rich said, how is Jalen Hurts going to be able to adapt to these blitzes? And these Eagles fans, hey, y'all was all in my last video. I got <laughs> comments. How y'all going to block the DNs? How y'all going to block the D tackles? Okay, you going to see. I don't, have, I don't have <laughs> Y'all be making it seem like double teams don't work in the NFL. Like, it happens. And then Brandon Graham, okay, he is cold. One hell of a uh, pass rusher. Sat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. He going against Jake Matthews. Jake mm-hmm. Matthews ain't no slouch. I don't know who told y'all that. He ain't no slouch. Mm-hmm. He's made the Pro Bowl before for a reason. He knows how to protect. Chris Lindstrom, he knows how to protect. Now, if you're going to talk about Matt Hennessy and, and Jalen Mayfield, Jalen Mayfield is 6'6". 
300 pounds. You're not going to just be pushing him over all game. At one point, he's going to get frustrated. And he's going to want to put somebody on the ass, a pancake. That happens. Fletcher Cox gets tired. Brandon Graham gets tired. <laughs> Y'all make it seem like these boys going to be able to play 30, 30, 40 snaps a game. Who they got after that? They ain't got no depth. They got that one. They got one guy to come off the bench. But I mean, we forget about McGarry. See, McGarry got baptized last year. Yeah, he was going against Cameron Jordan. So yeah, it's not like like he, it's not like things that they didn't see. You know, four out of the five guys that started on the offensive line, I believe, is okay because even Hennessy did well against one of the top defensive linemen in terms of pass rush and Chris Jones. Chris Jones, yeah. yeah. Chris Jones, yeah. He was from the fire. He was from the fire. And he did, and he did very well against Chris Jones. So like I said, I thought he was going to get bodied. I thought Matt Ryan, right, right off the snap, that he was going to basically be in his face. But he did well. So we're talking about like an aged Fletcher Cox. So yeah, he's not he's not no spring chicken. He ain't no Chris Jones. See, or anything like mm-hmm. that. go ahead, go ahead, Rich, go ahead. Man. People don't understand, right? That this is not the same offense we seen last year with Dirk Cutter, where you're just doing power iso and it's just straight man on man on man on a man macho macho you know what I mean? and it's not strength versus strength this is not that type of offensive scheme or or running plays we're not doing that now when you're running the zone right well, what you're going to be doing you're moving the line of scrimmage left and right you're getting that defensive lineman moving from his original spot which yeah. ends up helping creating running lanes all it mm-hmm. takes for that defender to pick a hole, pick a gap, and all you have to do is just turn your shoulder and seal him off. You know, mm-hmm. get guys, get him running. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. that's going to help getting them guys tired. So expect us to take advantage of that. And back to the offense with Kyle Pitts. I ain't say too much on him, but, you know, him being a vertical presence down the field, him and Hayden Hurst being a, a vertical presence down the field and – and also the creativeness of what Arthur Smith is going to do. You know, he, he we've seen how if he wants somebody to get the ball, he's going to call the exact play and he's going to get them the ball. So it's really scheming guys open. I'm excited to see that, uh, which is going to be big part of uh, our three keys to victory coming up. Bro, we ain't scheming nobody open in th- since Sharkeys has been here. In two years, we have not really been scheming people. Let's be 100. The best scheme open uh, play we had was the play where Hayden Hurst was out, and then you catch that easy touchdown. Right, That's right, right. That's the best scheme play we had. And y'all making it seem like we don't have athletic offensive linemen. These boys get out. If we want to screen, Jake will put that boy on his back. They don't, oh, them screens don't work with Jake. You run a screen on Jake's side, right? <laughs> that's two yards easily. And hey, let's not forget, guys, how we won the last game versus the Eagles. Was it a screen? It was a screen. Thanks to Jake, too. Big Jake. Oh, oh, okay. I, I didn't know. I didn't know. So that means Jake is still on the team, right? Mm-hmm. He's still there. Mm-hmm. He's an asset when it comes to screens, bro, and when it comes to getting to that next level. All this line hasn't played yet together, so I know it's going to be a couple plays where they might make hiccups in there, but they're going to, throughout the game, they're going to adjust and be better for the Falcons. Matt Ryan will have time, at least a couple of plays, to make deep shots. Y'all thinking like, y'all make it seem like DNs don't make mistakes or D-tackles don't make mistakes. Or they don't flop and fall hoping for a penalty. Up, I'm already downfield. Get your, get your big, big stuff up. Get back I, to I, the just, I just don't want to give up no sacks, really. That, that's my biggest concern is, you know, keeping Matt Ryan upright, you know, keeping him sharp. And Matt Ryan is going to make the proper decisions with the ball. And, he, you know, Matt Ryan is known for spreading the ball out, you know, to everybody. So he's going to find the open guy, you know, that matchup that's there. Boom. But at the same time, when it's time to that, when we do that run that heavy play action, play get them going and you know we, that's where we possibly might take that shot you know deep downfield we give Matt Ryan the, the proper time so he can let that thing fly you know what I mean so that's my biggest thing is keeping him upright because Matt Ryan been sacked a lot these past few years mm-hmm. been Definitely. hit a lot so mm-hmm. the O-line gotta hold hold up you know not give up nothing and give him some time and we're gonna be all right trust me trust me I mean you get sacked a lot if you don't utilize the backs. 
You'll get yeah. sacked a lot if you can't scheme tight ends open. You'll mm-hmm. get sacked a lot if you keep sitting, trying to satisfy people's fantasy teams, like trying to throw post routes and um, deep corners, like every play of the field or every time in the field. Now, I just have one issue right now. And it's not even an issue because I actually appreciate um, this particular. I don't know if he's a Philly fan or anything like that, but or you just trolling. But Kalen Jenkins, appreciate you coming into the chat. Appreciate you coming to check us out. Um, he says Philly D-line drooling at the chance against the Falcons O-line. That in for a long game. Now, every time that I do see people like that, and I appreciate your comment, and I appreciate you coming out and actually saying this, outside of Fletcher Cox and maybe Brandon Graham, who else? And I'll give you the opportunity. Pre- that's pretty good, good, bro. Huh? Good. The other DN. Okay, so he said he says he's a Philly fan. So, okay, then I appreciate that, you know. But – what about your? I mean, because eventually, like, if you want to get into a shootout, do you like your chances against Atlanta in a shootout? Because not many do. If we, if I mean, if I, if I give you an opportunity to say, okay, let's let's talk about a shootout. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you like your chances with us in a shootout, or do you have that much trust in um in Jalen Hurts? You only have like what you said three games of experience. Oh, they got they got Ryan Kerrigan too, huh? Yeah, they, they do. do. I think he a backup right now. Uh, yeah, them. so he's gonna, he's gonna be in a rotation. Yeah, they they got a good front, a front four, front five, front six. But I mean, y'all make it seem like slants and <laughs> slants and 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 stop routes and curl routes don't take people to the house. You gotta be able to tackle on that back end. They can throw and if you can't tackle, we still gonna score. Then you gotta hope they don't call pass interference. That happens. We got somehow, some way, somehow, some way, this guy dusted off Ryan Tannehill and made him like a pro bowler. Yeah. What what exactly? And they were and they were basically one half away from going to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And they and he has not even half of the weapons that he has. But not even half. It was basically if you want to look at it, a lot of people look at that that season as like the Derrick Henry show, that was like his breakout season. And then Ryan Tannehill's job was just not to screw it up. But again, like I said, I, I I need to know more than just than just that. I need to know about the secondary. I need to know more about their linebackers because yes, Matt Ryan has been sacked a lot, but this is a new offense. That that this scheme is meant to get the ball out of his hands and get the ball out of his hands quickly. So that he doesn't have to sit back and have to survey the field, or anything like that. If he mm-hmm. does that, then I don't okay, wait a minute, hold on, here we go. Whoever clicked on that, I appreciate that. I don't think Philly's defense will allow it to get to a – Philly's defense would allow it to get it to a shootout. Matt won't have time for a deep shot. His Falcons not scoring more than 24. Who want that? Anybody want to talk about that? Um, you <laughs> lost the words right now, bro. Even with a shitty offensive line, we score over 24 points. So I don't even know what he's talking about with that. I don't even got time to waste my time with that, bro. He can have that. He can have that. Nothing um, we say is going to change his opinion on this show. I can tell you that now. He already believes that that they're going to – their front four, their front six is going to take over the game to where we're not going to be able to do nothing. Have you ever thought that Jalen Hurts might throw an interception and put us in good position to where your defense might be tired and they might get overused? He is a rookie to me. He's only played three games, bro. Mistakes happen. Hell, I saw in the preseason game when he went out for cramps or whatever he had, and Joe Flacco was in the game, the center hiked it 30 yards back. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, 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 y'all got y'all stuff straight on offense? Do they have that the much faith in their coming. offense? But do they have that much faith in their, in their offense and their coach? They don't even talk about offense, bro. They in my talk comments, they don't talk about either. defense. That's, that's all I talk about is the front seven. They don't talk about offense to me. So I don't think they got faith in that. They're hoping that Matt Ryan – this is what people are hoping. They're hoping that Matt Ryan gets so cluttered, which rarely happens because Matt Ryan is one of the best going against um, pass rush or against blitz packages. So you can uh, hope for that. Obviously, you don't know the stats. That's what, they hope for. Yeah, that, that's what they hope for. And Matt's not going to make too many mistakes the way you think they're going to lose the game that way. It's the first game, bro. They haven't practiced. They haven't played in two weeks. They've been scheming for two weeks on this team. 
Matt Ryan has played Fletcher Cox multiple games. He knows how Fletcher Cox get down. It's not like it's his first time playing Fletcher. But hey, let, let's get into the three keys, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll say for my three keys, you know, for us to win in is, of course, I'm gonna make this quick. Uh, you know, establishing the run. You know, winning those those one on one matchups. You know, after a while, we won't be able to double team. You know, every play or whatever, but we'll be able to hold our own. We gotta establish the run. Second thing is taking the ball away and making Hurts pay when he run. We know mm-hmm. there's gonna be times he's gonna scramble. This time I even seen a read option or something where him him running or even QB power or anything like that. So they won't be afraid to run with Jalen Hurts. Now the biggest thing is uh, the defensive guys, when you get a chance to hit a quarterback, make him pay. Make him not want to run the ball no more. And I think we have the guys on defense to do that. Third team, spe- third thing is special teams. I feel like Cordell Patterson, Avery Williams, you know, we're going to be aggressive as uh, what the special teams coach said, and we're going to be smart as well. And we got playmakers on, on the special teams factor on it. And these guys have an opportunity to make something happen. So I want to see that have a factor in this game with the special teams. Mm. Yeah. Nope. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 let Twisted, yeah, I'm going to let you finish us off, but I'm going to say this. Um, three keys, right? Three keys from the three kings. So I'm going to say this. Number one, it's the offensive line. It starts and ends in the trenches. It's going to start and end with them. You know, it's not just about Jalen Mayfield, Big J May. It's not just about him. It's about the cohesiveness. That's one unit of five guys trying to achieve one goal, and that's to move the essence of football, and that's to move a man against his will and basically just suck the life out of that team to the point where they don't even want to play no more. That's what you need to do. I'm gonna basically try to run you behind. I'm gonna take you to the bus. I'm gonna take this. It's like a scene from uh, from the. If anybody seen the Blind Side, and they remember where they 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 seen that scene when Michael Orr took that kid and he, and he took him to the bus. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what I want to see. He was nasty. He was nasty, and I think that's what we need. We need nastiness. We already know Jake Matthews is nasty. That's his bloodline. It's just nastiness in that family. We already mm-hmm. know that Chris Chris Lindstrom is a technician, and he is nasty. Those Boston College offensive linemen are nasty. Okay, his brother's mm-hmm. crazy too, and we already know the one of the craziest men on our offensive line is go crazy Caleb McGarry. You know, right side is the nasty side, and we need him to establish that, and basically just hold. We know that you're not going to be able to shut down, uh, Brandon Graham. We know you're not, you know, but we want you to do a steady job, so that Matt Ryan could actually have the time and the confidence to step up in the pocket and make his reads and also get that man tired so that we have two legitimate running backs that could that could even wayne garman if you want to sprinkle wayne garman in there like i said the dude averaged like 4.6 yards of carry we're going to mm-hmm. establish the run tomorrow I, I mean if you if you got adhd or you can't pay attention to to boring football this ain't the old falcons or whatever like that man but we're going to establish the run if you want to think that we're going to be slinging it all over the damn field you got another thing coming. We're going to establish the run. It's going to be play action. It's going to be eerily similar to the way that the Tennessee Titans play. We're going to run the ball, and we're going to establish the run. We're going to establish like uh, an identity. Tomorrow is supposed to be sending a message, and I think that's what Arthur Smith is essentially is saying without actually saying it to give the Eagles, um, you know, bulletin board material. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm here to to send a message tomorrow. We're going to send a message tomorrow. You're going to get into a fight tomorrow with us. This ain't the old, you know, Atlanta Falcons where you could get right, you know, or whatever like that. This ain't Georgia Tech, okay? This ain't Georgia Tech where you come down here, you can feel like you can get right. No, you're going to come in, you're going to be in, you're going to get into a fight in your hand. We're going to make the Mercedes Benz, Mercedes Benz zone where you're going to regret coming down here. God damn, James Chan. Right, yeah, it's down, you James Chan. Yeah, Chan. Yo, bro. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'm sitting there talking. I don't know what happened in the what happened in the uh, in the chat. This is nah, he, he just was saying F them all. I guess it's cool. It's cool. I mean, we do play them, but 
Hey, yeah, man, let's, let's, you know, let, let's, let's take it from let's 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 take it down a notch. You know, dang, bro, you wild, bro. You gonna bust the blood vessels like it's you got twenty about twenty four more hours, man. You, you gotta get hyped tomorrow. Um, I agree with what uh what Rich said, and it's about special teams. Now, with another weakness that we had last year, Avery Williams is our punt returner. CP is gonna be our kick returner, and it's all about field position. We hear that spilled over time and time again in coach speak and everything like that because they believe it. The shorter the field, the easier it is going to be to score. Because we still got, you know, we still got young way cool. Mm -hmm. That's that's good from what, 50, 55 yards and whatnot. If we score... I want to see him. Yo, let me tell you something, man. I know you don't want to see him. I know you don't want to see him. But if we get up, if we get up on this team, we can unleash those dogs. Okay. Yeah. So if we get up about ten nothing, or maybe like fourteen nothing, or whatever like that. And we and he start to feel that pressure. It's it's a done deal like that. It's the L. Mm -hmm. What you got? What you got? Uh, twisted. I mean, everything y'all said is pretty much correct. Y'all took all the keys for a reason. <laughs> I don't really, I really don't need to say nothing. The only thing I want to say is, I don't want Dean Pease to take the same approach that Todd Bowles did on Thursday night, to where he was just like. I'm a blitzer. This is a blitzing team. We're going to keep blitzing. I want Dean Pease to hit him where it hurts. If this guy ain't making no good reads, let him, let's see if he can pass. Let's see if he can go past that first read and go to the second and third read because he great ain't letting that happen like that. Um, I want to make sure that the linebackers are used properly as far as when it comes to blitzing. We don't need to blitz both of them at the same time every time. Uh, I want to I want to make sure it's timely blitzing. Like like Mag say, control chaos when it when it works. Um, as far as the offense, I want I want to make sure that they actually put into the fold with these two tight end sets. As he's been saying, um, he put on a depth chart that the, the twelve personnel is pretty much what's going to be. So I want to make sure we use that and establish it in the beginning of the game. I want to see how they guard these tight ends. I want to see how they're going to guard these backs out the backfield because if that's their weakness, keep hitting them. Don't change nothing. And when we get a lead, when we get a lead, do not change up what was working. If this guy can't, if he can't sit in that pocket and throw, keep unleashing it. Adjust when they make they finally make plays for you to adjust. Don't just adjust because we up 10 to 15 points. Oh, That's what God. I need. And when we get in that red zone, score, touch. Downs. I only want to see cool for extra points. <laughs> That's all I want to see. I only want to see cool for extra points. Let's use the weapons like we're supposed to. If we got Kyle Pitts and Hayden Hayden Hurts out by itself, let's see if they safeties can guard them. They do got Anthony Harris who came from the Vikings. He is a good safety, but he does make mistakes at times, as all safeties do. He is not the other safety that they kept. If he was Harrison Smith, they would have traded Harrison Smith and not resigned him. They let him go for a reason. The Vikings defense wasn't good. We we torched them last last time. You see, Tony says something just now about Caleb McGarry. You know, he did play a good game in 2019 uh, uh, against um, Cameron Jordan. You know, he held, he held himself up. But my biggest thing right now, Caleb McGarry better have a Pro Bowl year, or at least close mm. to him. Reason being, with that long hair, I see he grew his hair. I see he grew his hair. <laughs> I don't know what he think if that's gonna help him block people or or you know making that run going. But I better see him work because if it not, he better cut that shit off respectfully. <laughs> respectfully. So respectfully. <laughs> he better cut that shit off on his hair if he does not make it to the Pro Bowl. I, when we drafted him, I was expecting to see a bully. A cowboy, whatever that that's just straight raw. So I better see him go to work this season. So that's all I got to say on McGarry. That's all I want to say. And he <laughs> took it personally. <laughs> that ass growing your hair for you supposed to block. Mm -hmm. and for those of y'all, for those y'all that don't know that, that's like a that's a New York thing. When people say dead ass, that means I'm serious. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, what Jerome said here and um, give you a little quick history lesson. But I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we should be able to confuse Hurts 
The linebacker's eyes will be the key to the game, diagnose the RPO correctly, and stop the short, intermediate pass game down. So here's the thing. Uh, with our legendary defensive coach, he's, um, when he was coming up and he learned the 3-4 and he learned the 4-3 under guys like Bo Schembechler and um, you know, other legendary coaches, what happened is that he actually went to Navy and he had a job at Navy and Navy runs the RPO. So he learned how to stop the RPO by being within that, you know, within that system when he was at Navy. So mm-hmm. this guy has seen everything. Like he has, he's not just a guy that's going to run that's like a typical three four, or he's going to run like a four three. He calls it multiple for a reason because it's meant to adjust. It's a it's a living, mm-hmm. breathing thing. You know, it's not just something where it's like you just going to line up and it's like that's just what it is. No, it changes week to week, quarter to quarter. You know, like uh, uh, basically place to play. That's what's going to be. So. When I, when I say that, I'm not trying to be, you know, I'm not trying to be an asshole or nothing like that. But, like, yo, this guy see pretty much everything. And he, I mean, he's seen his share of rookie quarterbacks. And he's not yep. just going to just send. And those that really just send blitzes and, like, rookie quarterbacks really don't know the essence of defense. You're supposed to kind of confuse them by running multiple defense that are not just, mm-hmm. I'm just going to throw, throw a bunch of blitzes at him and I want you to get happy feet. No. It's supposed to have one guy drop out, two guys drop out, and three guys rush. Um, throw the skies. From, like everything. Have one guy come up and then have one guy go back. See, if I was a defensive back, I love playing and stuff like that. Because mm-hmm. I start smiling when I see that quarterback start shaking, and you see it in his eyes when you got him. You start seeing it in his eyes when you got him. And when you got yeah. him, when you know, you know. Plain and simple. Yeah, now, I see a lot of people in these comments right now. Kevin, I know you can I, I I know you probably getting ready right to, to lead to this too, Kev, because a lot of them talking with their chest right now in these comments. And yo, we we good, y'all. Trust we all on the same page. Let's get it going. Tomorrow gonna be a great day. We all wearing the same colors, room for the same team. They saying with their chest, but I'll let I'll let you do your thing, Kev. Bro, I okay, this is the first time since um we talked about say with your chest. That the entire comment section is talking through their chest. I don't yeah, even know they where they're right now. They're wild. Like, I'm, I'm, bro. I'm afraid to even have James Chang on the show right now because I don't even know what dude is gonna say. But know. obviously, this guy is he's he's talking knowledge. But I don't know where it happened. I don't know where everything kind of went left. They saying what they <laughs> chest in the comments. If y'all gonna keep yeah. that energy, keep keep <laughs> keep the say with your chest in, in the comments. All right, we don't come I mean, on the show with no negative energy, right? You're... Yeah, I'm hearing like grip strength better be stronger than Vita Veil. Like, we talk about grip strength now. <laughs> like, we personal trainers. Like, I don't draw, I don't know what's going on right now, but um, I'm thinking if anybody wants to come on to the show and talk about this, you have to keep it clean. Okay, don't, don't come on here talking a whole bunch of nonsense. You know, we're allowed at least. Three to four swear words a show. Okay, don't come on here. That's our budget. Okay, three to four swear words a show. Anything more than that, you know. Like, oh, you know, I like see that. what happened, bro. Ghost Peppers right. basically was saying that with Kyle Pitts, we don't know. I'm guessing, you know, as far as we can't just call him a Hall of Famer yet. I'm guessing, like he, we got, we got to let him that? show it. Ghost like, Peppers, like, basically saying like we got to give him a chance to show what he can do in the NFL. This ain't college, which is okay. And Bobby yeah. Boy basically saying like, if you're not, <laughs> if you're not, a, if you're not with us, you're against this type thing. But well, I mean, Peppers is with it though. He he not he's yeah. not even saying all yeah. that. Like, nah, no, like, like James, hold it down, he's hold like, it down. Like, Ghost Peppers cool man. He he part of the family. I right? straight straight yeah, up. Definitely. He he good. He good. Yeah. It's all love. Yeah, like he's he's basically uh, just saying going. like, let's not let's not crown you know crown the guy or whatever. It's like let's just see yeah. what he got before we start saying that he's like the yeah, next cool next Megatron. Yeah, that's all he's saying. If I mean, if I'm if I'm taking it um, correctly, but Jerome has a a question because this whole thing just went left. It's like the Jerry Springer show all of a sudden, man. Yeah, like, who, wow. <laughs> who do y'all think has to have their best game for us to win offensively and defense, defensively? In y'all opinion? Hmm. Uh. Well, everything stops the QB, right? Yep. So we got to make sure Matt Ryan is, is hitting all cylinders. We know he will. I'm not worried about Matt Ryan. Um, and then for defense, I'm going to say the linebacking core. 
that's the best of our second. That's the best of our defense is the linebacker core. They have to really put their foots on people's necks. That's that's all to it. And if the linebacker court take over this game, we will have turnovers. We will have Jalen Hurts flustered. We have him hurting. <laughs> I, I, we already I, I, had muscle cramps or stomach cramps the other day. So, I mean, like, he might have jitterbugs. I don't even know. I don't know. Maybe that's a Philly QB thing, man. You know, you know Don McNabb had the, uh, the bubble guts in the Super Bowl. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, what, what you got, Rich? I, I was just going to say, I think uh, Matt Ryan is going to control this game very well. And he's going to show everybody the Hall of Fame. He's going to show Jalen Hurts and the Eagles that he's a true Hall of Famer and that he's going to be game manage this whole game really well. And um, that's one dude on offense. And on defense, I might as well just say everybody. And mainly the D-line, <laughs> you know, including Dante Fowler, because we know we got to get to the quarterback. These outside linebackers, they're going to have their opportunity. So, We'll let's see how um, if these guys can get to the quarterback and get some sacks. So make them uncomfortable. You know, you know what you know what, what you know what always we've been saying since for like for the past year since like we've been doing this show. It always came down to coaching, man. We yeah. always had the players. We always had the personnel, but it was just the vanilla offense and the vanilla defense. I mean, we called. We call Dan Quinn Dairy Queen for a reason, okay? We, there's a reason why we call Dirk Cutter Farmer Friend, okay? There's a reason for that. Shout out to K Styles, so, you know, subscribe to his channel. Um, there's a reason why we call the guys today, and it's the fact that you just can't just like throw throw a, uh, an offense out there, and there's no motion, you know, there's no scheme, there's nothing behind it. It's just there it is, you know. There's our 12 personnel, tight ends over there, the other tight ends over there, and then we have, like, you know, they're running back. Like, there's, there's nothing going on right there. You know, there's no imagination. So that's what's sad about that. This is going to come down to absolute coaching. There's two rookie coaches, I mean, if you want to say rookie coach, or first-year coaches that's going against each other. And what I have, what we have in our back pocket is a legendary defensive coach and one of the most coveted offensive minds in a long time since Kyle Shanahan at our disposal right now. Mm-hmm. That's what we have. Don't don't get it twisted. It's the fact that this guy, Arthur Smith, was coveted by a lot of teams. If Atlanta didn't get him, more than likely he would have been in Philly. More than likely. If you want to talk about like all the openings that was that all the jobs uh, that was open, more than likely he probably would have taken that job. But there's a reason why he chose this. He has a lot of toys at his disposal, and that's why he's smiling so much in the media, in the conferences and whatnot. There's a reason why he played his starters during those first three games of the preseason. I'm going to get my guys to game one healthy, and then I'm going to show my toys off in game one. He's happy with it. He was happy with the joint practices. That's what it was. But if he felt there was any reason why or any reason where I would feel like a little bit uncomfortable, he would have to put us out there, you know, in, uh, in preseason. But he didn't. Mm-hmm. There's a reason behind it. There's a, there's a rhyme reason behind this man. And it's going to be on display in less than 24 hours. I guarantee it. Look like you had to say something to say, uh, Twisted. Nah, man. The game's on, so I'm anxious to see, you know. I'm just ready for tomorrow, bro. It's pretty much nothing else to say for me. I'm just anxious and ready for tomorrow. I ain't sleeping nights. So I'll probably be on Madden all day. Watching college football and then scheming don't do versus these Eagles. That's right. So since that's the case, and you know we ain't trying to run up and for those uh for those Georgia dogs. If you're a Georgia dog, say go dogs. Uh, in the comment section, we're gonna wrap this up. You know, because Oregon, got- Ohio State playing right now. See, see. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna let y'all go, and maybe, maybe you might see me tomorrow. A little pregame, so maybe I don't know. I might have to come. I might have to convince my my the other two kings or whatever. Maybe give a little taste. If not, that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> we might. We might. But you have to. Do it. You have to like, share, and subscribe to find out. I don't quick know. Thirty I didn't minutes. That much of that. Might put a thirty. Might put a quick a little. Put a quick thirty. A quick so, thirty. Well, Manage with thirty. Well, come on there. We might <laughs> give you a little quickie and then we out. Okay, <laughs> give you a little quickie, then we gone. All right. 
Um, final four is, yo, get hype, man. Get hype for tomorrow. But for all that is freaking holy, man, be respectful in the comments. If you're going to disagree with somebody, disagree with them. But don't say they call people out their name or nothing like that. That's because they disagree with you. We got people of all... You know, all affiliations, all teams that come in here because they feel like it's a community, you know, it's a, it's a community, of, uh, it's a nation in here. You know what I'm saying? So just because somebody is like a little different than you or have a different opinion, or no matter how crazy it may sound, just chill on them. You know, just come with facts. So, My bad, man. See, see, the Eagles calling him right now, bro. <laughs> but I, I guarantee you, I'm gonna get so many calls tomorrow. I swear to God, they always do me like that, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. What do you do? You want to handle this this question before we before we run out of here? I ain't giving no. We ain't doing that till next week. We're not giving that answer. I saw both okay. uh, wins and stop doing that. They be trying to they 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 try to switch it and say, oh, well, y'all said we gonna have ten wins. No. Doing it. Yeah, let's yeah. Do before, it. yeah, before people run off, before people run off and all that stuff, let's just hit it right now. Um, not so much address it because I've seen some people saying Super Bowl, going to the Super Bowl and all that. But my final <laughs> thought, for my final thought, let we're gonna take this shit one game at a time. Yeah, hear me? One game at a time. The only thing right now ahead besides of us taking it one game at a time is us winning the division. Okay. The goal right now first is to win the division and take it one game at a time, all right? Mm -hmm. So we'll get there when that happens. All throughout the season, you know, you'll start to see that develop. Like, guys will get better. Uh, guys are going to end up getting hurt or, or possibly, if it's not on our team or maybe another team, uh, you know, we y'all seen we saved enough money. We created more money just in case for the season. If we need to sign a guy, we'll be able to do that. So Beyond Jones. exactly. So mm -hmm. that's one of my, my, my biggest keys in the final thoughts. We're going to take it one game at a time for the next five weeks, each week, every week is going to be a good test for our offensive linemen. Cause we're going to be playing against a good front seven, but right now mm -hmm. let's just focus on tomorrow. Get it going. We're going to light up the scoreboard. We're going to make some good plays on defense. We're going to, we're going to lay the wood on hurts. Pause. <laughs> Yo, man, <laughs> shit gonna be crazy though. But more than that, you know, love is love. Appreciate everybody for tuning in, man. It's gonna be a good, good game tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you right now, man. Like, look, last thing, last and then we out. All right, check this out. What's about to happen is if, if you know, there's a show tomorrow. I saw people in there like, damn, no say what your chest. We apologize for that. The comment section was was on fire. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the same with your chest was happening in the comment section, man. We didn't think it was gonna be like that, but I promise you, I promise you, if we come on tomorrow, I'm gonna have I specifically will have it there. So T Buck, mm -hmm. if you want to say it with your chest, tune in. If you know and make sure you like, share, and subscribe, man. If you're subscribed and you see that icon come across you, come on in. I like to talk to you, man. Ravens Nation, I see you. Yo, that's my, you know, that's my brother. That's Tyler cousin. Oh, for real? Yeah, that's what I be oh, saying, bro. They, they only do that to troll me, bro. That's what they do. That's, that's how they are, bro. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's how it is, bro. They Ravens fans heavy. Right. So from the Red Clay Sports Morning Show, we appreciate you know seventy three of y'all that you know that's still here. But from the Red Clay Sports Morning Show, from Rich the headhunter, the Mike linebacker from our resident defensive line, our pass rusher up top, twisted. Your boy, the best promo cutter in the league right now. The host of Red Clay Sports Morning Show. So from the three kings to y'all, we appreciate y'all. See you tomorrow. Peace. <laughs>